Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Does the thought of refurbishing an old hull like this one give you a headache? Well for me buying brand new was not an option so I've decided to breathe new life into this old 1975 model Caribbean sandpiper so that I could have my very own estuary boat. If you've ever thought of taking on such a massive project like this one stay tuned to see how my husband and I did it. You can read my full feature article on this part of the refurb in the digital magazine Australian Boating Mags, issue 262. The link to the magazine will be in the description below. We had big plans for this little hull and I'd already started removing stuff. We knew that we'd have to redo the transom and remove everything else from the inside of the hull, including the front anchor well. We'd planned on putting full casting decks, a side console and a decent size outboard on the back. So it was time to get cracking and get my hands dirty. So yesterday I pulled the gunnel strip off and I'm left with this hard glue. So I've basically got to chip away at all this black stuff. That's all old glue and it's hard as a rock. With no easy way to get rid of this 43 year old glue, I took to it with a hammer and chisel. This prepared the area for new gunner robber down the track. It was time to remove the existing gunnels so we could fabricate some new smooth lines. By removing the front anchor well, this would free up so much more space for a big casting deck. We used rectangular PVC downpipe cut on the diagonal as the risers and round PVC pipe cut off center as the bullnose. The bullnose on top would help direct any splashes of water to the rear of the boat. Now that we had these components glued and silicon together, we had great lines to work with. We knew that the transom timber was in bad shape and would need replacing, so Dennis proceeded to cut away the engine splash well so we had a clear area to work with. After seeing how rotten the transom actually was, we decided to cut an inspection hatch into the floor so we could have a look at the stringers. And I'm so glad we did because it was full of water. Once the rotten transom timber was removed, we could tidy up the area ready for the new transom to be installed. Using 15mm and 18mm hardwood marine ply, we roughly cut the sheets to the transom shape, ready for the laminating process. Ply was then scuffed up and ready for a coat of resin on the two facing surfaces. While the resin is still wet, a layer of 450g chop is fiberglassed into position. Now the boards can be sandwiched together, creating a laminated sheet. The two sheets of ply are screwed and clamped together, squeezing the excess resin out. The laminated sheet is then left to harden up while we work on other things. Using a sheet of fibro board, we traced out the transom shape, ready to be transferred onto the newly laminated transom timber. Dennis used the plunge saw and the jigsaw to cut the new transom out.
The fiberglass sandwiched in the timber tends to blunt the blade pretty quick, as you can see from the burnt saw marks. Now it was ready to be dry fitted into position. Satisfied that the new transom timber fit perfectly, we could mark and cut the enlarged bungholes out. The last little bit of prep was done to the transom wall before installing the transom. Any delaminating fiberglass was removed and a new sheet of chop was put in its place to strengthen it back up again. A sheet of fiberglass chop strand was resined into place and then the new transom was placed into position. This was then clamped and wedged together for a tight fit, ensuring both surfaces were completely stuck together. Dennis then mixed up a batch of body filler consisting of Q-cell, Cabasil and resin. This was then used to fill the newly cut bung holes and any other gaps between the transom and the hull. We decided to prep the bung holes in this way so that when the new smaller bung holes were drilled out it would have less chance of moisture and water getting into the timber down the track. By scraping the excess filler away we wouldn't have to sand the area as much in preparation for fiberglassing. Now the transom was completely laminated to the hull, we could prep the surfaces for fiberglassing. The exposed edges of the transom timber were routed down to a nice smooth corner, so when it came to fiberglassing, it would be easily rolled over this smoothed edge. It's time to seal and fiberglass the new transom into position. First, we dry cut some chop strand to size. This was then rolled in with plenty of overhang for the outside of the transom. The next layer was a combination chop and double bias matting. This layer takes a lot of work rolling it to get it completely resin soaked. The final layer of fiberglassing is a layer of chop strand to finish it all off. A filler coat is troweled onto the outside of the transom to blend it into the existing part of the hull. After cutting away the original anchor well, we had room to fabricate a new bow sprit for the electric motor to mount on top of. tip as it can, which is going to be virtually there. So that whole black part should be hanging off the front of the boat. Yeah. But that's not the front of the boat, that's the lip of the, the gunnel and the front of the boat is there. After a lot of measuring and dry fitting the template, I could now go ahead and cut away the remainder of the fiberglass, so the new bowsprit would sit snugly into position. The underside of the bowsprit was given a coat of fiberglass before installing because this was going to be way too hard to fiberglass upside down.
upside down glassing. Doing good, Dennis. Getting high. Doing my dirty work. Once it was in its final position, we could go ahead and tag it in on the inside. The next step of the refurbishment was to remove everything else that was on the inside of the hull. Using angle grinders, diamond saws, multi-tools, flap disc grinders, we hacked away at the unwanted fiberglass, flow coat and timber that remained in the boat, including the recently installed floor so that we could get to the horrific stringers. This was not an easy task and took a lot of time and care, but over the next week and a half, we had the floor and stringer area completely cleared out and back to the original hull. This was one of the most time-consuming processes up until this point. If you haven't done a refurbishment like this one before, then let me tell you, this part is a killer. Make sure you wear all your safety gear because fiberglass dust is not your friend. You're gonna be super, super itchy. Although angle grinding is very time consuming and very itchy work, this is one of the most important steps to preparing the hull for the rest of the rebuild. I'm so glad we took a little more time and effort to remove the old floor and the stringers, so we had a completely clean and new start with a fresh hull. Dennis measured and cut a new keel from the leftover marine ply that we had. This was not an easy task because of the shape of the hull, so fitting it into position was a little bit difficult. Dennis and I made up a batch of glue using cabosil and resin. This was going to be a nice thick bed for the keel to sit on, so there'd be no gaps between the hull and the keel. The excess glue was scraped away before it dried in preparation for fiberglassing. We used taping in fiberglass for the first coat, which is about three inches wide and a little bit easier to use in this first application. Next, a layer of 300 gram chop was cut to size, laid up over and down the sides of the keel, stretching past about three inches. The final layer of fibreglass to place on the keel was a layer of fibreglass cloth. The stringers were a lot more straightforward and went in a lot easier than the keel. They received the same fibreglass dressing as the keel to make sure that they were nice and strong. Now that the keel and the stringers were fiberglassed into position, we could start measuring up and cutting out the new subfloor. Once Dennis had the floor fitting nicely, he cut away the step down water trap for the bilge pump at the rear of the boat. Because the floor is longer than a standard sheet of marine ply, we ended up cutting the floor from two sheets of 15mm hardwood marine ply. The edges were then routed on an angle so they'd sit snugly down into the hull. Just as an extra precaution, we decided to flow coat the keel and stringer area against any moisture down the track, although this area should never see any water. Oh, my face! I get it. Just keep going. <clears throat> Is it on camera? Yeah, probably. Yay! Finally a blooper! Finally it was time to install the new subfloor, so we mixed up a batch of glue using Q-cell and resin. This glue was troweled onto the stringers and the outside edges of the subfloor, and anywhere else the two surfaces were going to come into contact. We had already pre-marked where the stringers lined up on the floor, so it made it easy to install the new stainless steel screws. Any gaps between the floor and the hull were now filled with the leftover glue. 
Now all of this was done, we could put the last bit of floor in, where the step down water trap is. Using the last of the glue, I could fill in any gaps that I could see, so that everything was nice and smooth for fiberglassing. Any existing lumps and bumps and old flow coat was ground away in preparation for fiberglassing. Firstly, we dry cut the layers of fiberglass to size. We used the combination chop and double bias matting as the first layer. And the final layer of fiberglass to be rolled in was a layer of 450 gram chop. Both layers of fiberglass had a fair bit of overhang on the new subfloor, so they had a good adhesion to the hull. Thanks for watching everyone. If you've enjoyed watching the refurbishment up until this stage, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and stay tuned for the next episode.